Do you want to be the most thoughtful host this holiday season with custom place cards for your guests, but you're not sure how to do it efficiently? Hi, I'm Katie Devlin of The Laser Foundry, and in today's workshop, I'll show you how to use the new free Lightburn Art Library files, plus variable text to make it a quick and easy setup. The project we'll be making today is a leaf place card. To do this, we'll cover downloading and installing the Lightburn Art Libraries, modifying the designs to suit your needs, adding the text to the design, how to use variable text to create one design and use it for multiple personalized items at once, creating the files needed to use variable text, and optimization settings to improve the speed of your job. We're keeping it super simple today, so the only supply you'll need to follow along is a plywood of your choice. Before we begin our project, let's review art libraries in Lightburn. Art libraries allow you to quickly access specific artwork directly within Lightburn, rather than finding it on your computer and importing for each use. You can have multiple art libraries and easily swap between them. So you may want to organize by style of artwork, SVG or image, client work, or personal whatever makes the most sense for the work you do. The team at Lightburn recently released new free art libraries, full of designs that you can use for your projects. These are a great starting point for any project, especially since you know they have already been optimized for use within Lightburn. In certain designs, you'll see different parts of the designs placed on different layers. This will allow you to quickly set your engraving layers versus your cut layers. The art can be used in both your personal projects and for items that you choose to sell. To access the free libraries, you will head to the location in the description and choose which art library you'd like to download. The download will start automatically to your downloads folder. Once you've downloaded, you'll head into Lightburn and open the art library window if it isn't already open in your workspace. From there, you'll choose to load an art library and we'll need to find the library in the location you saved the download. The file will have a .lbart extension, so you can search for that if you're unsure where your library ended up. Now, the art is available to use in any project. You can add images to your project in two ways, either by selecting the image you'd like to use and choosing the Add Graphic to Project button, or by simply dragging the image onto your workspace. For our project, I'm going to choose the images of the leaves as I think these will make great place cards. I'm only going to use one style for all of my place cards, so I'll go ahead and delete the other designs that I don't need. I'm also going to replace the inner engraving area with the names for my place cards, so I'll delete that portion as well. Now I'll resize my design. I know I want it to be four inches tall, so I'll make sure that everything is selected and that my aspect ratio is locked. Then I'll enter four inches into the height field to resize the leaf. Once that is finished, I'm ready to add the name text box that I'd like to use for my variable text. Before understanding the power of variable text, I would have created each place card individually, but we don't need to do that today. So before we set up our design for variable text, let's briefly cover what variable text is and what we need to complete to use it in Lightburn. Variable text is a function within Lightburn that allows us to automatically substitute specific data using formulas in our text string. While that may sound very technical and complex, it is very simple to use. It has many functions, but the one we will use will allow us to create our full list of names in an external file, then create our design once in Lightburn, and have each name automatically populate. I'll start by creating our list of names in a Google Sheet so it is ready to use in my Lightburn file. I'll create a new Google Sheet and label my first column name. Then I'll add all the names of the guests at the holiday dinner. I'll make sure to check spelling and capitalization as well as Lightburn will import exactly what is here into the design. Now Lightburn begins counting columns and rows from zero, so column A here, name, will be column zero when we use it in Lightburn. When I've completed my entries and checked my spelling, I'll save the file to my computer as a .csv file. This is the format that Lightburn needs for the variable text function. 
Now I'm ready to head back to Lightburn and prepare my design. When I'm creating a variable text field, I like to look at the design with the longest name that I'll be engraving as my guide. This helps me to ensure I like the size of the font and the placement on the leaf. In our case, that name is Jessica. I've created the design with the name Jessica in a script font to review. Here's a quick tip. When using a script font, you'll want to make sure that the toggle for welded is turned on in your text edit box. This ensures that you don't have places the laser skips when engraving due to overlapping lines. You can see the difference here. When I have the welded toggle turned off, I see white lines in the attachment points of the letters. Those areas wouldn't engrave if I were to leave my file as is. When I turn on the welded toggle, you can see those disappear and I'm prepared for a clean engraving. Once I like the placement of the name Jessica on my leaf, I'm going to change the text box to accept variable text. First, I'll confirm that the text in the box is aligned to the middle both vertically and horizontally. Then I'm going to change the type of text from normal to merge CSV. This step enables the variable text formulas to be read. Before entering the formula in place of the name, I want to load the CSV file we created earlier that Lightburn will need to read. To do this, I'll open the variable text window by clicking on the top of the window to enable the window in this pane. Once it is open, I will click the browse button to find my downloaded file. Now I'll change the text of Jessica to be the formula I need for variable text. In this case, that formula is percent zero. This formula says to replace the text with the values in column zero from our file. Remember, Lightburn starts counting from zero, so our column A equates to column zero. If you're curious to learn more about additional formulas, you can check out Lightburn's documentation, which you'll find in a link in the description. Now this is where the magic happens. In the variable text box, I'll change the current number to one. Just like Lightburn counts the columns from zero, it does the same for the rows as well. Our row zero was name, so our first name is in row one. Now I can press the test button and I'll see that the percent zero changes to the first name in our list, just like magic. I can test other names by either advancing with the arrow buttons or choosing a random number to test. If I feel good about how my names are presenting, I'm ready to move on to the next step. There are two additional steps you can take here if you're working with names or text that vary greatly in length. First, you can set the max width of your text box to ensure that your name doesn't end up larger than your item. In this case, I'd set it to about 85 millimeters to keep it inside my leaf. When you make this choice, you'll want to decide if you use squeeze or not. Lightburn needs to understand how to resize any text that doesn't fit naturally in the box size you've selected. It can either reduce the font size, no squeeze, or maintain the height of the font and squeeze the letters together, squeeze toggled on. This will be a matter of personal preference for the project you're working on. Since I've tested for my largest name and think most of my names should fit well within my box, I'm going to toggle squeeze on. Now we've seen how we create the first item. How do we get multiples on our sheet to each engrave a different name? We'll use the grid array tool. Before I create my array, I want to set up a tool layer to represent the 12 inch by 18 inch Baltic birch sheet that I'm using. Now I'll have a visual as I set up my copies. Before I create my copies, I'll select both the leaf and the formula and group them together. This will tell Lightburn to treat each copy as a single item when I select or move them. This will be useful later for optimizing my engraving time. Based on the rectangle I created, I can fit four columns and three rows on my sheet. I'll use reverse direction on the rows to have them fill the screen from top to bottom, and I'll shift the rows by half to do some natural nesting. I'll modify the X and Y spacing as well to get the items close together and save space on my sheet of plywood. I need to make sure to toggle the box on that says auto increment variable text so that each item in the array gets the next row from our list. The way this works is by automatically applying an offset value to each copy of text. For each individual copy, the offset will be added to the current value and the data from that row of the spreadsheet will replace the variable text formulas. You can also adjust these offsets manually if you're working with variable text, but not using a grid array. Now it is time for even more magic. 
When I press the test button in my variable text window, you can see that the names are all different and ready to engrave. What is really cool here is that if I've already set my layers correctly, I can go ahead and send this job to the laser. It will send the name starting with the row I've identified as start. I can change the number in the auto advance field to reflect the number of items I have on the page. Then when I've completed the first job, I can click the next button and populate the next 12 names. If I wanna automate it even further, I can toggle on the auto advance button and the next 12 names will be ready to run after I've sent the job to the laser with either the start or send buttons. Now this is awesome, right? You can easily set up multiple sheets fast for your projects. Once you've optimized this part of your process, of course you'll want to optimize the actual engraving time, right? We'll use the preview window to take a look at our time and the paths the laser is taking. Currently my engraving laser is set to fill all shapes at once. And you can see in the preview window that my gantry head is going to travel all the way across the bed to do each line. Lightburn expects this to take approximately 23 minutes. If I change my engraving layer to fill groups together, you'll see that the time drops to approximately 13 minutes. I'll take that time savings. All right, now that my settings are updated, I can send my first set of names. When that is complete, I can send the next and repeat as many times as I need to complete my list. Not much finishing is required on these once they are engraved and cut. I may want to give the top a quick sand, but otherwise this is a quick and simple, very elegant project. Now you know how to utilize the art library in Lightburn and combine the power of variable text with the grid array tool to batch out unique designs in just a handful of steps. Remember, practice makes perfect and the more you put these tools to use, the quicker each project will go. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Lightburn Workshop videos.